It's always good to have you. Welcome back on the AM show. Thank you for staying. It's another first, Joy Prime in partnership with HD Plus, the HD experience partner for the multimedia group, premieres Africa's first ever live football game in ultra high definition 4K. Think about that. Catch the semi finals and final of the Euro 2020 in ultra high definition 4K on Joy Prime uh, between the 6th and the 11th of July. Be a part of this first. Visit the Samsung App Store on your Samsung Smart TV, download my HD Plus app, and tune into the HD Plus dedicated 4K channel 100. That is channel 100. Don't miss out on this first in Africa. See it. Feely, feely, yeah, Yagani in UHD 4K via my HD Plus app on your Samsung Smart TV. This 4K broadcast is powered by KNET Networks Infrastructure and produced from Silicon House Production Studios. So keep your fingers crossed and do tune in. But coming up now, we talk about the big one, the population and housing census. And from the Ghana Statistical Service, we bring you Francis Nyakon Labi Head, Publicity, Education and Advocacy. He joins us for this all-important conversation. Mr. Nyakulabi, thank you for joining the conversation. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I know we are going to lay bare all of the <laughs> issues. But let's start from the angle of the progress we have made uh, so far. In the first week, we had covered about half of the population, which was, which was wonderful. But as of this point in time, how far have we come in the process? Um, well, Still, the story is good. Mm. Uh, yes, the story is good. Uh, the, the, the enumerators are doing uh, quite well on the field. Um, as you mentioned, when we looked at the data on the, um, the ninth day, um, what we saw was that uh, 99, and the ninth day, as I'm talking of, was Tuesday. So it means all these numbers I'm calling have now been upped. Yes, will have been up now because they've still been working for the, for from Tuesday up to now. Um, from 99.9 percent .9 of the, 99.9 uh, percent .9 of the enumeration areas, mm. are, we receive report or results from all those places. That means uh, the, um, the enumeration areas I'm talking of, um, we are talking of uh, over 56,000 areas right. where enumerators are working. So uh, almost everybody um, has brought um, some results from his enumeration area. Uh, those who have not come, may, there may be very serious reasons, technical reasons that uh, has not made it possible for them to probably... Uh, have, have you experienced any of that? Some of those te technical reasons for which some people have not been able to uh, facilitate the GSS with data? Oh, you, you, can, you, can, you can have a situation where um, at the point, everything is set, mm. and, uh, and the enumerator was, was wow. just about to go to full. He, he takes ill. Oh, wow. Yes. Right. And, and, and for two, three days, uh, or some number of days, he's not able to go to work. Uh, uh, at that stage, sometimes it's difficult immediately for the uh, supervisor to say he's replacing him or he's sacking him or mm. something, especially when it is an uh, ailment that he, we, he can just recover quickly and come to work. Right. So we have some of this. Normally, it doesn't happen. That's why you see that uh, uh, the normal is um, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 I don't want to say insignificant, because that 0 0.1 itself uh, works to about 56 enumeration areas. And if, right. you, if you look at the fact that uh, each enumeration area has an average, average of a population of between 500 and 750, it's right. quite a number. It's so, quite a number. Yes. So I mean, 500, are, even if we're using the base the number, basic, 500 uh, yes. times 56, uh, yes. that's it's, quite a number. It's quite a number. So uh, we, we know the, by, from, from the ninth day when we looked at it up to now, mm -hmm. uh, something uh, had been done. If we were to look at it by, by now, I believe at least if they have, they, they have not finished, they may have um, reduced the, the workload on them. Uh, but, so but have you had cause? I, I just did in my head, if you're doing 500 by 56, at least you'll be looking at upwards of 25,000. Yes. So that's significant. Yes. But have you had cause to let go of a few people? Have you had cause on the back of what you just said? Because you said, let's say someone has taken ill, maybe for some reason for, you would want to wait. Yeah. In other instances, yes. have you had to let go of some of for, them? For, for those we have had the cause to let go, we, we had good reasons of inactivity. The person, 
is not working. He, mm. he, he comes, talk to his supervisor, and then the next day, you, you call him, you say, I'm on the field. Supervisor goes around, he doesn't find him anywhere. Sing come. You see, the, the, the work ethics for the field data collection is that every day you, you must see your supervisor and sync the data you have collected. Every day you must see your supervisor before you close from work or after you close, before you sleep. Mm. You must be in contact with your supervisor and sync the data to the supervisor for the supervisor to look at the data and then forward it also to the, the field data and district data uh, editors mm. to look at it and then sync it to head office. Mm. So your work that you have done must not be on your tablet to go and sleep. That's, that's how it is. So um, if somebody is not working, immediately uh, he, he, you can find it out, yes. So these uh, 56 people that I said uh, we have not received um, uh, any data from their enumeration area, it means whatever is preventing them from doing that, uh, it is something that the supervisor uh, may have uh, agreed or is have, has knowledge about it. Sometimes some people, or some people also, what happens is that you go to the difficult areas. There are some areas that are difficult to reach. L like which ones? Oh, supposing you go get into an island, you can, in this rainy season, you can move into some area. And then as you go, you cross some rivers. You get there and then it rains. Mm. And the, 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 the rivers are in flood. If it continues raining three days, the river is up. You cannot in flood, you cannot cross. So sometimes a numerator gets crossed behind, locked behind uh, such situations. And for some number of these, you may not see him. So if something like that has happened to your enumerator, you may be aware by virtue of maybe mobile phone access or right. something. Right. But the data, you probably may not be able to sync because they need to be close to sync to the supervisor. So, so what happens in such instances? Would you, for example, I know we're just a few days shy of the end, that, which is the 11th. Yeah. Uh, in such instances, what would you do? Especially if, uh, let's say, for one such place, on, on D-Day or deadline day, you've still not been able to... Oh, such situations do not wait till the D-Day. Such situations do not wait till the D-Day. Uh, what will happen is that before that time, uh, the enumerator will have done something about it. This data... You see, the 56 comes to... You, you as a supervisor, you may be looking after uh, five. Mm. Five enumeration areas, and one of them is the one behaving that. So at your level, at the supervisor's level, you have a very good knowledge of who is performing, who is not performing. Why are you not getting results from this person? You have a good knowledge about, about it, you see. But the, for them to be able to sync their data to the supervisor, they must be closed because that is by Bluetooth. That is not internet, it's Bluetooth. Mm. So they, they must be closed. So if a situation has prevented him from coming close to you or the two of you coming close together, it means it will be difficult for him to sync. And for that kind of situation, you understand that, yes, he has gone into the year he's working. So any time he crosses and comes, he's coming to sync. All okay, day. so I, I get the point, but I was pushing it a bit further. Yeah. Let's say there is, I don't want to use force majeure situation, but let's say there's a flood, for example. Mm -hmm. And throughout the period, let's just assume, mm -hmm. the person can't even go out because the place is flooded, no one is going out. How are you going to enumerate, for example? Mm -hmm. In su some such instance, and deadline day has arrived, yeah. and you've still not been able to even go out because it's practically impossible. What, yeah. what happens? Uh, the good thing is, census does not have such strict deadlines. Exactly. That, that's what yes. I wanted to say. Census does not have such strict deadline. If for some technical reasons, uh, good reasons, you have not been able to sync your data, but you have collected them. You know, as it is, you, 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 you are in the community, if you have been locked, you are in the community, but the river that you cross on your way is in flood. So you are waiting for it to come down. So what will happen is that you will have done the work in the community. You see, it, you will have done the work in the community, taking advantage of some bricks in the in the raining as the rain uh, rain period. You see, it uh -huh. so the 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 enumerator and the, the the problem then is that because the enumerator and his supervisor have not been able to come close within um, a Bluetooth range to be able to transfer the data to his supervisor, then that is what the problem is. So that one, there is no problem. But where the supervisor is also aware mm -hmm. that. 
this person is not work, uh, working for whatever reason, either he's lazing around or is whatever reason that can easily be handled, he will just change them. We have changed a couple of them okay. uh, on the field. Yeah. Uh, let's now talk about the, the data proper. How, how, how much work has been achieved? What more remains to be done? Oh, well, um, looking at it, uh, the data on our service, uh, about 56.6% of the expected households have been uh, enumerated, 56.6 across the 16 regions. Of across the, the 16 regions, mm -hmm. the, the the completion it is the completion rate that varies. It varies between 38.9, uh, or let me say 39 percent to 39 uh, percent in Greater Accra right. to 80 percent in the northeast region. And, and the last time I checked, northeast had about 64%. So yes. it appears their counting is, is going is going on. Also, yes. it, it also borders on the size of the population. Greater Accra is also, it, it has the biggest population. In the yes, region, so yes. I guess that impacts it. Well. Yes, but not so much. Greater Accra has the biggest population, so it also have a highest number of, a uh, higher number of uh, enumerators. Mm. So um, uh, at the end of the day, we expect that uh, their work should also uh, be going up. But you know, the not only greater Accra, maybe it's because of the percentages. I'm look, I just looked at the, the smallest and the, and, the, and the highest. So uh, some uh, uh, activities in other regions have been hidden. If you are looking at maybe places like Takrade, Kumase, who have, um, which have problems, similar problems like greater Accra, they also, you realize that they also uh, have pretty low numbers. Yes, yes, numbers that they are also trying to um, uh, catch up with some uh, uh, enumeration because these are urban areas. It, enumerators go to the field and they find it difficult getting access to the people. You get there and the man has gone to work. His wife is gone. His children are gone. The house is locked. So you wake up in the morning. Some of them are compelled to start working very early by 6 o'clock. He's on the move. But how many households can you cover? Yeah. You see? So by the time you have administered the questionnaire about three or four households, the next one, everybody is gone. So that is... That is so it. you've targeted these areas that need more coverage. And, yes. And you're we, ramping we, up in those Yes, those we know them. We know all those areas. And so um, we will target them all uh, and give them... Uh, uh, even what, what's happening is that we, we are not waiting till the end. So what's happening is that there are uh, some areas some regions who have um, enumeration areas, uh, the enumerators have completed their assignment. So those people, we reassign them. Mm -hmm. So we have started reassigning uh, some of the enumerators to regions or uh, areas that have oh, right. uh, difficulty. So you're redeploying. Basically. Yes. For those are who are done with their work, done where with they their were work. assigned, yes. you're pushing them to areas that need more Need coverage. more hands. Right. So that is what it's going to do. And are they going to get extra? The next question I was going to ask was the payment of these enumerators. I know there was a bit of a hiccup uh, right before they, yes. they started. <laughs> have they all received? Uh, they what, have all what, received. What is due? They then? have all received. The hiccup was... Uh, uh, I, I won't say unnecessary because it's about income, but uh, mm -hmm. it's maybe, let me say, on uh, misunderstanding. You know, Stasca Service will do a lot of projects, mm -hmm. and it has uh, this data collection. Sometimes the financier, the financier comes and, and the resources is good. So the data collectors, what they go is, is good. So the financial but, hiccup has been dealt with. Yes. Oh, it has. Have they, have they been paid fully? The last time no, we had one of no, you come for data collection, there was for data collection, you will not be paid fully. Yes, will not be paid fully. You are you are given some percentage uh, to to start the work, right? And 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 sometimes another percentage as the work progresses. Mm -hmm. But a big chunk of the money is reserved right. to be paid at the end of the day mm -hmm. to foster a situation where people will not take the money and run away, right? Because sometimes you pick the data and there are certain errors that require you go back. To their place and that one good thing about the census is that most of them are in the areas right. where they stay they are resident resident yes so um it is not that difficult but uh, going on the ground what we realized was that well some people some of the enumerators were were smart so uh, when you say they were smart they were smart you it's is is it's, you know the application was done um uh, through the internet and right. so uh, they say 
um, the instruction says uh, choose the locality that you want, uh, where you, which is where you stay. And then the, pe the woman or the man stays at Dansuma and says, uh, uh, I want to work at Amasamai, and that is where I stay. Right. You see? So some people gave you this. Yes. That wasn't so some people correct. did not give us that this thing. And, and the system, once you have given that, you go for interview and you say, Yes, I am at Amasamai. And, but in actual fact, you live at Dansuma. Well, that's interesting because these yes. people are supposed to be correct, uh, collecting correct data. And if they themselves are giving false information, that is <laughs> false sometimes, data. sometimes, sometimes it does happen in the in the in the in the edge or whatever it is, the mm -hmm. zeal to get to get the job. People are staying in the house doing nothing, and so right. sometimes in the zeal of getting the work, he takes it out. I can just move from Dansomai to uh, Amasamai and go and work. But definitely, after after the process and all you know, uh, clarifications are given the person's work is confirmed, then yes. they will get their full payment. You will get the full payment. When your work is done, you submitted all the data and it is checked and there is nothing for you to go back to correct or whatever, your full, your full payment. I, I was asking earlier, so for those who may be doing a double shift now, who are done with what yeah. they were supposed to do and now are being redeployed to other areas, are they going to get they, extra? They, they come in with, for a different contract. So, so that different. means those people are going to earn twice as much? Uh, it might not be twice as much, but something good. The idea is, supposing that uh, you, the first one you did, you have completed that one. Mm -hmm. Now you are, going to, you are coming to assist me, and I'm, I'm, I, I have 500 or less than 700 uh, households to... Maybe I've covered half already. You yes, I've covered half. And you are coming to, two of you are coming to help me to complete the 250 or the 300 that is left. Mm. You come and do 100, or you may come and do 50. Mm. Another person is doing 50. Then the work is exhausted. So if you are going to pay you, it will not be as much as what you did in your original area. Well, that impacts what the person who originally was designated to that area should get. Maybe, is it going to be that, well, yes, you weren't it, able it, to complete your work will, in the first will, place, so yes, uh, it, we're it, going to take a little... Yes, something. I was not able to complete it. What, why? What was the main reason? When I, I have an enumeration area where I have listed about 700 or 1,200, and I'm working, I've not been able to finish. Um, I've, I've enumerated about 600 households, and you come to help me complete the 300, you see, to finish the 900. So when we have, we finish... You coming to do 50 and taking some impact, the management is looking at it. The person who is also working from the end date, and that is the 11th July, if he continues working, he should also uh, attract something. It should be like he has also been reassigned. Right. Yeah, it right. should be so, it will be considered like he has, he has also been reassigned. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if he continues working on the old scale, it, it, will, it, will, it will not be fair. Let's talk logistics. Yeah. Have you faced any constraints in moving your people in, in any material, whether stationary, whatever it is? Have you, have you, I mean, even the technology oh, that you're using? No, not, no, no, no. The, the logistics, yes, they were all not moved at the same time. Mm. But as the field work progressed, we moved them uh, every day. Vehicles were moving crisscrossing the country. Uh, 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 with, with, with logistics. And so, um, I would, um, they, and there are certain logistics like uh, face marks and those things that we keep sending them uh, around. So every now and then we get information from a particular region or district, uh, and we need these nose marks, we need this, and vehicles have to take them around. So yes, the logistics were all not uh, uh, given out at one go, but as we speak now, we finish moving all our logistics to our people. I think the, the, the last one that people were complaining about, uh, especially as a rain setting, is the uh, uh, um, Wellington boot. Right. Uh, yes, and the Wellington boot, uh, management took a decision not to buy from Accra and give to them. Uh, what happened was that it was given, the resources were given to the regional statisticians to look at the areas where they will need and then you buy it for them. Or you allow the persons to buy just to be able to be sure of sizes and, 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 and the need for, for, for that particular um, logistics. So all those things have been sent to them and 
we are working fine with him. Let's talk about some areas where maybe logistically you've not been constrained, but there are other areas where you faced challenges. Enumerators have died. Some have been involved in accidents. <laughs> tell, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. It's unfortunate. Uh, as for the deaf, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. But yes, we have some enumerators um, uh, unfortunately dying. Yes, we, and do you have a number? Can you put a number to it? I think the deaf, completely dead, dead I think uh, what has come to my knowledge is two. Mm. Um, one in the uh, Upper East region and one in Ashanti region. And unfortunately, they all died as a result of motorbike accident. Mm. Unfortunately, they all died as a result of motorbike accident. Um, uh, uh, regrettable, though. A number of them also. Um, uh, have been involved in the, also mo the same motorbike accident, uh, but injured. They they were not. Uh, uh, they didn't die. So so so, so tell me, wh what exactly has been happening? Is it that they are so they are trying to reach the communities quicker? They are they are on motorbikes, and then something happens. Yes. They are hit yes. by the motorbike. Yes. You 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 wake up in the morning. For instance, uh, the guy who died in the. Um, Upper East region, he has waked up, he works in the community with a lady, another lady enumerator. So he picked his motorbike, went to the lady's house and picked her and then they embarked and they were going on the way. Uh, I don't know what happened, but there was this articulated truck packed wow. by the roadside. Though the truck was, was, was neatly packed, he was not in the road, but I don't know what happened. He just jumped into the, the articulated truck and you know driving on a good road the road there is good mm -hmm. so riding on a good road uh, naturally the speed will be a little maybe beyond 50 or something you are in a hurry also to go to work in the morning and then all of a sudden you, with that full speed you jump into an articulator look at the beam you hit your head mm -hmm. against the beam I mean you you what's the strength you naturally um, died the, woman, the lady who was sitting behind her also sustained some injury, a little in the face and on the shoulders. And, and she has, thank God, she, she survived the accident. So she's recovering. That so for, for her, for example, is the GSS taking uh, care of the medical bills and all of that? What, what happens yes. in such situation? Yes, in that situation, yes, uh, we take care of all those things. Uh, no, the question uh, wasn't... Is, will the GS is the GS taking care of? Uh, I'm I'm unable to say is, but I will say will, because uh, sometimes when it happens, how much is GS bringing to you? You are you are you are involved in an accident and you have been hospitalized. So how much do you want GS to bring to you? You yourself you don't know how much it will cost you. Yeah. But if God helps you, you you have survived. You go through your treatment. Then you know that it cost me this much. You present the receipts. You see, it, uh, so GS is now able to say, based on this amount or this amount on this situation, we'll be able to give you, if not full, some percentage or this. Uh, 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 just like um, the brothers or the, those who, who pass on. We, we are, GS is not able to give them uh, resources adequately enough to say, we, uh, to compensate them. A life is lost, you cannot, you cannot bring it back. But at least we're able to uh, suit the pain of, of, of the families uh, by, by helping them uh, in the funeral and some other resources. So. Right, right, right. Uh, there's something else that I, I know definitely is a handicap. It, it fetters you in some way. And it has to do with uh, the seeming invasiveness of the questions that people uh, have to answer. And I say seeming because some people see it and think, mm. So I had a personal experience a few days ago. I spoke to someone who was saying, eh. and these people come around and they're asking you how many toilets you have in your house. <laughs> uh, am I, what religion do I uh, subscribe to? Yes. And all of that. Some people find it invasive. I had to sit the person down yes. and say, but you know, there are religious demographics in the country. Yes. We need to know whether you are Christian. And even if you are Christian, for example, yeah. Which denomination of Christianity yes, yes. do you? I am Catholic. Yes. They would want to know what denomination do you yeah. uh, belong to? Do you have toilet facilities? Have you thought about open defecation? Have you thought about the law when it comes to households having toilets? So these are all. But I realized, even on social media, that some people felt it's invasive. Why are you asking me these questions? Yes. Has that been a challenge? Um, it is. 
it is as you you administer the questionnaire you you ask a question and and a respondent will ask you ah is that also necessary should i answer that you see it yes but what we say is every single question in the questionnaire is a policy issue mm. Every single question there is a policy issue. You know, you see, um, when we are about to take census, the questionnaires, all the questionnaires do not come from GSS. Like GSS sit down and come out with all, no, 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 no. Stakeholders come with their interest. Issues, they want the census to carry along. So we we'll look at them and then the co committee that works on it will now say, okay, let's take this, let's pick this, let's pick this before we come up with the, the complete questionnaire. And so, um, you know, open defecation is an issue right. in, our, in our part of the world or in our country. And so uh, uh, we want to find out at the household level. And you know, census is the only survey or only survey that picks information on every single person in the country. Mm -hmm. So when we have the opportunity of uh, taking the census like this, all those issues, we want to pick them up so that at the end of the day, we should be able to, to know the population in the country, yes, we know, but how many of them, if, if it is a matter of um, a, a, a toilet, how many of them have toilet facilities in their homes? How many households even have a toilet in their home? And even what type of toilet, not just the toilet, but what type of toilet facility do you have? Mm. So we, we ask you all those questions. So every single question that is in the questionnaire there, it's a policy issue. It, it's critical. Yeah. Uh, but, but let me go on then to ask, so especially as you've noted some of these challenges where in some areas, I'm sure sometimes the understanding may not be so good. Uh, what have you done? Uh, what uh, did the enumerators do? What do you do as a statistical service? Yes, as a service, as a, during the training, what we, are, we tell them is that you are fortunate as an enumerator to to have been brought here, you are going to sit for some number of days and we take you through the questionnaire. And every opportunity is at your disposal to, 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 to ask every question you want on the questionnaire. When you go to the respondent, he, has, he doesn't have that opportunity. He hasn't gotten it. So the questions you are going to ask the person, it is not easy for all of them to you ask and immediately he will give you the response. Somebody will feel bad about a question. Somebody will want to know why. So it is about the explanation you are giving that person. So the training that you go through, when you go to the data collection phase, you have to exercise that one day to educate the people on the importance of the census. Somebody will be coming and say about the census. The census of what importance is census? For somebody like me, um, what, what do I need the census for? Not because he feels he's rich or something. No, but he feels he's, he's maybe at the lower end of the ladder, so he doesn't need any, he doesn't get any help from government. He doesn't get any support from government. What support with this village? What, what has government even done for us before? Forgetting that at least when he's traveling, he moves on a good road or he moves on a, uh, uh, he has a community, uh, 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 how do we call it? Uh, community toilet facility or something like that. And all those things uh, are based on the data. So that is it. What we have done is we continue to educate. We continue to educate people at any opportunity on the um, uh, uh, social media, on the on the on the on the television and radio and all that. We continue to provide education to people on the importance of the census. Mm. So. And, and I think at the tail end, I'll have you, you know, go over some of those important bits, why we even need uh, the census. But it's also important to add at this uh, point that there are penalties if you fail to get yourself, you know, counted, you resist the enumerators, if you intentionally put impediments in their way, if you are giving false information, all of that. I know some 2,400 CDs uh, based on the penalty points. Yes. You could even serve uh, jail, jail time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that ought to be put out there as well so people know that yes. this is a very serious Yes. Case. Yes. So, um, you know, it is, it is an option we normally uh, do not want to reach that point. Mm. Um, I've come to you and I'm truly I'm picking information about you. So uh, what then happens is um, if you are resisting, 
we are resisting providing me with that information. It behoves on me to continue to talk to you, to plead, and then give me the information. For those who have genuine, or let me, let me, let me, let me end it saying genuine reasons for not giving. They, they, there is nothing like, let me even reverse it, a genuine reason for not giving the data. Mm -hmm. But for those who, sometimes the person has some fear. The person has some fear, this data I'm giving, it will be used against me. You see, so for those people, you have to uh, sit down and talk to them and allay their fears. And then they will provide you with, with, with the data. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. But uh, if somebody is resisting and everything, you see, one, one thing also is, Supposing you are in a community and we came and you say for me and my household, I'm, not, I'm the head of the household, but I will not provide the data. <laughs> yes, so what happens is that the numerator uh, will report to the supervisor. Mm -hmm. The supervisor will go and talk to, to the person. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's adamant, he, the supervisor may report to the assemblyman or the committee member. And then uh, after that, there is the uh, uh, district uh, field uh, data officer. This is first uh, officer, also with them. He will also come and talk to you. So all these people will come and talk to you. At least one of them will be able to convince you. You should be able to read Yes, them. at least your, your community chief. Sometimes it moves to the, the leader or the chief of the community. He will come and the chief of the community moves into your house and is telling you provide them with the data. You, you provide. So that we normally do not reach that point where we have to take the, the persons um, to court. Mm. But... When the opportunity, but that is the ultimate. Basis. That's the ultimate. If, if yes. you resist and if resist, you resist and resist, and resist, and resist when it gets to that level, uh, you, we the government's decision has that right to take you to the court, and, so the, and, the, and, the, and the law, the Ghana Statistical Service law, has made that provision for us. So it's either the penalty or jail time or both. Or both. Well. I definitely wouldn't want to get into the crosshairs, <laughs> the crosshairs of the Ghana Statistical <laughs> Service on this one. But uh, looking so far at the numbers, we've crossed the 50% yeah. uh, line, which is a good thing. We have yeah. some two days yeah. uh, to go. But what is the picture looking like? Before the census, uh, we had been told that, I mean, on many different, whether it was the UN, the, the WHO data, or even World Bank data, the estimate was that Ghana's population was hovering around 31 million. Yes. After counting 50%, what is it looking like? Is it pointing to the fact that maybe we have even more? Uh, let's reserve that question for government statistician. <laughs> I was trying to get it. <laughs> but at 50% plus, maybe let me put it this way. Yes. At 50% plus, mm. have we done over 15 million? We, we should be. We should, we should be. be, yes. Over 15 at 50%, given the... the, the, the percentage of households that we have covered we at least 50 percent of that number we should we should we should be mm. we should be here's a here's a very personal one your your catchphrase for this entire exercise is you count get counted yes i am ghanaian yes i count i haven't got counted and it, it partly boils down to Part of what you said. I leave yeah. home very early. Yeah. Sometimes get home late, and all of that. Um, in in an instance like mine, what do I do to ensure that I get counted? Uh, at the at the at the insta, if there is somebody in the house, mm. leave the information, the very critical information. Maybe your your years, your date of birth, your uh, educational qualification. Yes, you can leave those. Things that are particular to you, known to you, let let leave them to somebody. Uh, also, we also have this uh, facility where uh, the enumerator could give you a call back card, mm. which has his number, mm. and then you pick it and call him. Then you can arrange time. So that could be given to maybe a neighbor. In my, a in my neighbor. instance, yes, the, the person closest to me also leaves early, our place is gated, and so it would be difficult for, th there's no access even to that, get in there and give it that to That is the problem we have in our gated communities. That, that is why the urban areas, the enumeration you see is, is low, at greater Accra, and yes, mm. the gated communities is a big problem. But, but this is something you foresaw, yes. right? So how yes. do we, I mean, it should, it should have been, I feel, such that, 
now with technology and everything, I can maybe even, oh, this is the, the, a certain number that I can yes. access, and then I can even call in the course of the day and say, okay, so I'm ready at this point. I have 10 minutes for you. Yes. What are the questions? Uh, or it's a form to fill, yes. and I can submit online. What, what we do is that arrangement could be made using the callback card. So when you have the callback card, and you call the enumerator, then you are talking to the enumerator who is working in your area. So he can now arrange with you at the convenient time and then take you through the tele interview by telephone. Mm. Telephone interview is allowed. Right. Yeah. Um, do you have some of these, or basically it has to be that specific enumerator? It has to be that specific enumerator because where you are, your, 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 your residence is, is within an enumeration area. Maybe I should frame the question better. Yeah. Is there a line uh, or a number of lines we could call, maybe a hotline we could call from the Ghana Statistical Service and say, okay, I live, I, I live in X area. Yes. I've not been counted. Yes. Uh, can you give me access to the number of my enumerator or details so that I then get in touch? Uh, that, that can be done. That can be done. Yes, that can be done. If you, if you call our, our um, two-free line, Okay. And then your, your concern is that you want the number of the... We may link you through the supervisor. Hmm. And then the supervisor will get you that person, hmm. and the enumerator, specific person who is within your area. Hmm. And then he will call you. Okay. And, and yeah. So I've got some messages. Uh, yesterday, for example, I will send this. It's day 11 of the 2021 census. But to cut it short, uh, that toll-free line yeah. was there. Uh, 0800 yeah. 426 yeah. 426. So yeah. it is 0800 426 426. I think if we can, we should just put it on the screen 0800 426 426. So if you've not been enumerated, if you've not got counted, you count. So just call that number 0800 426 426. And uh, I'm sure. Uh, whoever is yes. at the end of the line will prompt yes. you, help you get in yes. touch with may, he, uh, the Yes, the right person way. will ask you some few questions if you, you can uh, answer. It helps. Whether um, in your neighborhood, the other houses also you are aware they have not been uh, counted. Right. Or, or have you, they, they are, they're listing with it. You know, we're writing numbers on here. Are you aware whether those people in your neighborhood, their houses, or structures have been numbered or have been listed. Mm. So if you, you have some information like that, you provide it. Then you will know that the enumerator, uh, uh, will, they, they will contact the district officer in charge, and then he will, will know which supervisor is supposed to work in that area, and then will, will let the enumerator come to your place and then work. Then it means okay. it is not your particular a house, just your, your particular house, but it is a problem within that area. That means an enumerator has probably not got into that area. He's working somewhere, he's coming, or probably he has skipped or whatever it is, the supervisor will find a, a solution to it for you. <laughs> so for me, I'm going to call that number today yes. and I'll follow through and see right. what happens for there. Right. Uh, from, from right. There. Because I count and I need to get You counted. need to be counted. As we wrap up, uh, Mr. Nyakon Labi, let's rehash, like I said, yeah. the, the real importance of a census. I, I know there are so many of them. Rehash for ordinary Ghanaians. Maybe someone has been resisting the process for, for all this while. Yeah. Tell them why it is so important, not only to get counted, but to give the right data. Data, yes. Um, uh, you have said it for me. We don't only need the responses from you, but the response must be right. Because the, the responses, all the responses we are picking are for policy decision making. And so if you give us wrong information, it will be, the, the policies that we'll be using for them will, be, will, be, will, will, will not be right the way we want. So we will expect that everybody gets uh, himself involved in this census. Those, um, the benefits of census are tremendous. I mean, they cut across everywhere. Is it, the, uh, as we're discussing, uh, community facilities? Is it toilet? Is it road? Hospital? Clin uh, clinic? Schools? All these things. To be able to come up with these things, government needs to know the population of the area. How many children are there? 
so that the school we are building, we need it must it must be a GSS. But do we have the primary also because the younger ones in the community are they how many are they? Or if we put two or three communities nearby, can we build a school in one of them for the for the children rather than the children just living in staying in the house and not going to school? So every single policy decision or every single development effort that will be made in our life is based on some statistics. And that statistics is derived from census, which is, which is population and housing census. We, are, we, are, we, are, we, we need all this information to be able to push the development agenda of our country uh, forward to the desired uh, levels that we, we, we all uh, will want to have. OK. And I guess it's only fitting at this juncture to say to the GSS, to you and to your team, Muneo, Muneo Jumayo. Thank you very and, uh, much. We pray for uh, better that you're able to complete the process and that the data does indeed help Ghana to become a better place. Thank Mr. You. Nyakulabi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Nyakulabi is head of uh, publicity, Francis Nyakulabi, head of publicity, education and advocacy with the Ghana statistical service. If uh, you didn't know some of those tidbits, you've got the education now, so you have absolutely no reason not to get counted. If you stayed with us uh, all this while, thank you uh, for your time. When we return, there's more, a lot more to talk about on the AM show.